right, yeah. Um, I just watched uh, on uh, Charlie Z's uh, YouTube channel uh, uh, from his Facebook link. Um, I clicked on it, you know, his latest match. Well, it wasn't really a gym match. It was actually a locker room match. Johan Sekiyaba. Um, all I seen was uh, he just... Zelenov just came up on him. The guy was just really relaxed. He was expecting a light spar. And uh, Charlie Z just started uh, wailing away with his, his hooks. His hook punches, you know, not working behind a jab like a proper boxer style, of course. Just trying to go for the knockout right away, full on power punches. And <clears throat> the guy wasn't hurt still. It's obvious. He was just annoyed. He's obviously an employee at that gym and he doesn't want to get in trouble. He just, you know, he was emphasizing after that, you know, that little punch flurry thing by Charlie Z. He was saying, uh, you know, I, I thought it was supposed to be a light spar, you know. <clears throat> and Charlie Z was just, you know, he was apologizing, saying, my bad. That's what I seen. That's what I heard. Um, then, like, he had his hand over the camera, you know, and hear country music playing in the background. And um, it's really lame. Very, very extremely lame. I've heard that Charlie Z, uh, and I believe it, he takes the padding out of his gloves. That's what I've heard. And, you know, it doesn't surprise me, and I, I believe it. He, he just, you know, takes the padding right out of the gloves, so they only weigh, like, maybe four ounces, like MMA gloves. And he gives the other guy regular pair of gloves that are whatever they are 12 or 16 ounces whatever they're all fully padded and they always expect him that he's just it's going to be a light spar and then he starts teeing off and that's what i always say these these guys in these gyms that they're, they're so gullible and naive and they're all like droopy headed just they're not alert they don't know what the heck is going on you know, it's, it's really like, I don't know, disgruntling sight. Like, I don't see anybody uh, that's uh, properly prepared. They just have their, they leave their guard down and Charlie Z just goes right at it, he goes teeing off, you know. People don't have, they don't have their hands up and they're not, you know, they're not working behind a jab, you know, trying to protect, you know, they're just taking everything really light and for granted. I don't, I don't get it. It must be the Cali environment, I guess. It's just overly relaxed area, you know, where I am, New York, everybody's really uptight. Everybody's like... <laughs> You know, like, I'm always, when I'm working, I'm, I'm looking over my shoulder all the time, you know, I'm like a crazy bird, my job, I'm, I'm always on the alert, because there's like all these vendors all the time in the warehouse, you know, at the store I work at, and there's danger at every corner where I work, people are ready to plow me right down. So I'm always like getting out of people's way and scooting out of the way. <laughs> it's like great footwork uh, training actually. Reminds me of those kung fu movies where they get really good at kung fu from from like the work that they do or something. You know, the, just their natural life makes them into a kung fu master. You know, but anyway, uh, I really wanted to elaborate more on the Wilder fight for some reason because it's, it's been bothering me how Charlie Z keeps insisting that he TKO'd him. I don't, I don't see that as being a, a plausible reasoning mindset to, to think that, to have that assumption that you had a guy KO'd just because you, 
you flung out a left a, a hook, whatever it was, left or right hook, whatever the heck it was, you know, wingy hook punch, and and he, you know, Wilder backed up, he parried away from the punch, and he's he didn't go down or nothing. He didn't go flying. He just he came right back into view. I mean, he he chased Charlie right out of the ring. If he was out. Why would Charlie Z run out of the ring? You know, he keeps trying to play people with these attempted uh, mind manipulation techniques and tactics that I think uh, he's probably picking up and learning from the Illuminati. That's, that's my big time suspicion that Charlie Z is, is one of their one of their henchmen, basically. You know. That's, that's what I really suspect. You know, he's, he's being in, indoctrinated to the, the Illuminati, the, the underground, great, grand, uh, sorceretic uh, wizardry, the witchery, the Illuminati, you know? Their magic, you know? Their magic mind manipulation tricks, you know? Evil, very anti-Christian in the, in the utmost sense of the word. So I think that I have a feeling that's what's going on. Yeah, um, not good at all. It's, it's a bad route. And it, it, if Charlie Z wants to really, if he really wants to shut up the haters, he, he needs to like. Really just step up to the plate. Stop living a childish life. You know, just do some real sanctioned matches. <coughs> Until you do that. <laughs> Until you do that, Charlie Z, I, you're not going to have any credibility. Nobody's going to take you serious. People are just going to call you out on, you know, your, uh, your tricks. You know, your silly uh, mind manipulation uh, wizardry. You gotta, you gotta be real. Just step up to the plate and have real matches, sanctioned matches with, with a ref and a crowd. And, you, know, you can't call time out. You can't step out of the, the ropes, out of the ring when you get hurt. That's for pro wrestling. You know, doing the whole timeout shenanigan stuff, the antics. Um, you can't do that. You're not in pro wrestling. If you're if you're hurt, I give you the suggestion and advice to just take a knee. That's the the boxing equivalent of taking a timeout. You can't just walk out of the ring. You you just humble up. Have some humble pie and and take a knee if if you're her and you feel like you need a little bit of a break, a little bit of a breather. You just simply take a knee. It's as easy as that. And then you just you let the ref count. And then when he gets to like eight, then you pop up. It'll be like eight, nine. You'll already be up. Don't wait till nine because you. You might accidentally get counted out like that's what Jerry Corey did against uh, George Chavalo back in 1969. That, that was a very unfortunate fight. If anybody gets to YouTube that one, Corey was out boxing him and for like, I don't know, eight rounds or whatever it was. And Chavalo landed a haymaker and knocked Corey down. And Corey took a knee basically and he, <coughs> he waited and waited till the ref got up to nine and then he he just didn't get up in time and he was counted out so yeah so it's like take a knee and then when the ref gets to eight then that's when you pop up you know and you can do that up to do that twice if there's three knockdown rule but i mean you can get a sanctioned match where there's no three knockdown rule and you can take a few of those knees if you want it's just you're going to lose the round big that's all but better than running out of the ring you know all right i'm going to cut it